don't usually make videos for reviews, but there were a few problems on here that weren't on any of the homeworks. Um, and so I wanted to make sure there was some help for those in case you missed it. Um, if you look at the back, number three um, has a system of equations that has to be solved using a calculator. It says, Mr. Woodward has $1,000 and invests it in an account earning 20% annual interest. So the equation for that is um, W, we'll say A equals 1,000 times 1 1.2 to the T, where A is amount of money, and T is time in years. Um, Mr. Hawkins has no money, but saves $1,200 a year. So he has no money, but he saves $1,200 a year, so that should be 1,200 times T. Same variables, the amount he has is 1,200 times the number of years. This is linear, this is exponential. Um, and we could try to solve this using substitution, Um, but from this point, there's no way to solve it because there's both an exponential and a linear. And so there is no way to solve this analytically. So instead, we're going to solve it using a calculator. We can't use matrices on it because one is linear, but the other one is exponential, and we can't do exponential functions in a calculator. So let's just put it in y equals. This is an example of a nonlinear system that can only be solved using a calculator. And there's something weird about this, which is that when I graph it, I, I can't see anything. Like even if my uh, like window goes from negative 10 to 10, this is just like kind of a terrible graph that doesn't show me very much. And what's going on is, let's think about what's actually happening here. This is an exponential where the uh, starting value is 1,000 and it goes up by 20%. Well. Obviously, we can't see that because this only goes up to 10. We need to go up to 1,000 is where it starts. So we need to be able to adjust our window in this calculator to make this work. And so what we need to do is we need to make our y max, which is how high you can see, go higher than 1,000. And in fact, I'm going to make it go up to 10,000 so that I can give it some room to grow. Um, I also like setting my x res to 2 to make it graph faster. And now you can see that exponential growing. And what we can see is um, there's an intersection, and what we should know is, is that when there's a linear function, it will grow slower than the exponential will eventually. Eventually, the exponential will take it, take it over, and so I'm going to make my window a little bit bigger. I'm going to make my x max go up to 30, and my y max looks like it needs to go to about 30,000. I'm just adjusting to make it a bigger window so I can see it better, and I can find there are two intersections here. Uh, the first is when x equals 1, y equals 1,200. So that means after one year, so after one year, both have $1,200, right? Uh, which makes sense, it went up by 20%. This was one year, he had $1,200. The other, enter, enter. When you, before you press enter on your third guess, you need to move your guess so that it's close to the other, um, intersection, otherwise it keeps finding the same one over and over again. The other one is after 16.314 years, both have um, $19,576.32. Um, so there's two different times they both have the same amount of money, and that's what the solutions to the systems of equations mean. All right. Um, let's see. Um, what is the product of the identity? Great. Um, you guys should be able to do that. We did that on homeworks. Um, we've done this on homeworks. Um, this we should have all done. The only thing we haven't done on homework is determinant. We did this in class, but let's make sure we all know how to do determinants. Um, when you're using determinants, um, the way we're going to do it is we take the first number in the row, it's going to be 2 times the determinant of the leftover matrix, which is this. So it's the determinant of 1, 2, 4, 5. The next number in the row uh, is going to be minus. So it's always, it goes positive, negative, positive, negative. So it's minus 4 times the determinant of 
the leftover matrix. We're going to cross out that row and that column, so what's left over is here. So it's the determinant of 3, 2, 1, 5. That is the determinant of the leftover matrix once we crossed out the row and the column the 4 was in. And the last one is going to be plus. We're going to use the last number in the column, which is negative 1, times the determinant of the leftover matrix, which is right here, after we cross out the row and the column. So it's the determinant of 3, 1, 1, 4. Okay. Um, now we have to do the determinant of each of these 2 by 2 matrices. Um, determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix is pretty easy. Um, I want to make sure we know the shortcut if it's A, B, C, D. The way the determinant works is it's going to be the first one, A times the leftover matrix, which is just a single number, D. Then it will be minus the next number, which is B, times the determinant of the leftover matrix, which is just C. And so the shortcut way is just to, to realize what this is, is it's uh, this times this minus this times this. So A times D minus B times C. So that's what we're going to do for each of these. It's 2 times 1 times 5 minus 2 times 4. This is 3 times 5 minus 2 times 1. This is going to be minus 1 plus a negative is minus times 3 times 4 is 12 minus 1. So we get negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 4 times 13 is negative 42. No, 52, JK. Uh, negative 1 times 11 is negative 11. And so this is negative 69 when we combine them. So that's our determinant, and that's how determinants work. Um, real quick, um, how do you tell if a unique, if a system does not have a unique solution for no solutions and infinite solutions on a graph? Well, if there's a graph, there are no solutions when there are no intersections, because where they intersect is where the solutions are. There are uh, infinitely many solutions if on a graph they intersect infinitely many times, which would be if they're like right on top of each other. So that would be in a graph how we can tell if there's no solutions or infinitely many solutions. Using substitution or elimination, um, we should remember this from Algebra 1. If we have something like x plus y equals 7, negative 2x, or negative x minus y equals 10. If you use elimination or substitution and you end up with something like this, a false statement 0 equals 17 with no variables left in it, um, that's no solutions. Whereas if you have something like this, and you add them up and you get a true statement, um, that's infinitely many solutions. Um, and using matrices, if the determinant equals uh, 0, um, it doesn't actually tell you which one of these it is, whether it's no solutions or infinitely many solutions. but but it's one of those two if the determinant is zero. So when you try to find the inverse matrix, if you try to do it in a calculator and you try to find the inverse matrix, it says uh, you can't find the inverse matrix because part of finding the inverse matrix involves dividing by the determinant and you can't divide by zero. So I hope this helps on your homework.